Surprise, surprise! They just announced five new Pokemon games. Get your ass over here so I can speak into the microphone. Oh shit. What's up everybody, welcome to the House of Mario, the Nintendo podcast, a part of the 8-Bit Collective. I'm your host Drew Agnew, joining me is Bryce DeWitt. Hello, hello. And today we have the news, finally. Just get done with an episode and we got news. Yeah, five new Pokemon games, technically, sort of. By technicality. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I guess there's... Two, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, two, two, two in the general scope, but two next year. Yeah, uh, we're recording this the day after the episode we just released came out. So I guess it's two, two in one week. Two in one week, isn't that nice? So obviously the rumors were all true. That's the uh, most surprising thing. It was hundred percent true. All those dot points which we read um, about two episodes ago, all right. <laughs> well, that yeah. screenshot was from these games. Mm-hmm. I think the leaks have come from uh, Neontech employees, though. You think so? I think so. Hmm. Yeah, Judge, judging by uh, judging by how much of an involvement uh, involvement Pokemon Go actually does have with these. Yeah, with the Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. In case you in case you, in case you're out of the loop, they were announced as a trailer up. Go watch it. Hmm. So very, very childlike, wondery, and very nice. Mm. So we'll start with Pokemon Quest. This was a game which uh, came out of nowhere, unlike the other games. Um, I've been playing it a bit. It launched on the same day as the, as it was announced. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very, very mobile ass video game <coughs> to its core. Um, mobile ass. Yes. So basically, your Pokemon are little cube <coughs> monsters, and they run around by themselves. Boxels. Yeah, and they run around, run around by themselves, and you pretty much just press when, when they attack. I've actually just put it on the option when they just auto attack, and they just run around and attack things and get experience and items. I'm like, this is cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good for a free to play. Yeah, yeah. So so far it, se- it it seems fun, but there's all those uh, uh we'll see how those free to play mechanics. At the moment, I can't play because it wants me to pay to recharge my battery to keep playing. That's really silly. <laughs> It, it, it's got those mechanics in there. So it seems like one of those games which is perfect to pop in there for 10 minutes, do a few expositions, which is basically just... Expeditions, yeah. Expeditions, yeah, sorry. And go go along and get some experience, maybe 10 minutes a day type of thing. Yeah. 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 I noticed the microtransactions, you can buy uh, decorations for your base. Um, and if you get the pack, which includes all of them, it's $45. Right, yeah. And that includes some... Um, battery recharges which I assume you can just press and it recharges your battery so that you know they'll disappear after a while too so it's not that's not a solution to that yeah no Mm. so yeah um, it seems fun for a game it's coming to uh, mobile I think uh, June. June June yeah June yeah so I hope they do I hope I can use my same profile on my Switch and my phone so I'm not playing two different versions because that seems silly yeah, well, yeah. Mm. Uh, maybe, maybe that'll happen. I'm not too sure. I, I'm, I'm personally yet to download it, but because it's free, for the most part, you might like, you might as well give it a crack, right? Uh, mm. It, it's basically like if you smacked Minecraft together, gave it a bit of like Age of Empires esque base type of building, and oh, you're not really base building. Put in Poker, uh, Poker Rumble. Well, I mean, kind of. You have a little home base, and you work around it. And you add decorations to your shit. Whether yeah. they're whether they're paid or not. so yeah so those decorations they've got like different abilities so um, I haven't really bought any decorations yet but I've got I finished the first set of missions and that basically gave me a Radata statue which um, what does it do it gives me extra experience or something when I'm out in the battlefield yeah like it gives you like little bonuses like that yep which is interesting so that's a fun game go and download it I'm sure uh, some of you have played it way more than we have <laughs> well yeah at the moment. Um, we might touch on it a bit later when we yeah. experiment with it, but it's quite early, quite early to uh, say way too much about it. But it's it's available right now. Go to the eShop, download it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Might as well. Yeah. Hey. And the big news, obviously, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee are real games. Meet into it. Yep. Uh, November 16th, they're coming out worldwide. 
And I'm surprised they didn't like announce an announcement yesterday or something, but it just like the rumors were pointing towards before May and they'll uh since yesterday they're pointing towards today and it all just happened. <laughs> it did. Yeah, it just <laughs> went bang. Just like, boom. <laughs> so um with these uh the leaks that were read out um a few days ago were 100% Yep. Smack on. Nailed it. Uh, the reason I would have to uh, say that the rumours come from... Uh, well, the uh, the leaks had come from Niantic uh, is because it seemed it seemed like at least the the Japanese side of the, of the picture was very, very hush-hush until they had those little pop-outs on Twitter and stuff like that where people were just whatever. Uh, and Niantic being an American company... Yeah. <laughs> uh it it just seems it it's a common trend to happen with uh Niantic in general. They don't they don't really uh they haven't really kept things secure mm-hmm. whether it been from their technical issues or you know they they have a real problem with hold, withholding information. Mm. I yeah, I dare say with uh, their side of things as well like uh Game Freak and the Pokemon company, they would you know, this is this is their baby. They'll be wanting to keep the surprise. Where over at Niantic, they're sort of like, oh, oh my god, like, they're probably Pokemon fans as well. Like, oh yeah, like you and I. Like oh my god, like we know this because of, of our uh, relationship with them. <laughs> so one of them obviously fought to leak it. Uh, and I think it's brilliant how it come out April Fool's Day. It's so brilliant. It really is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make everybody think it's fake. All right. So getting to the games themselves. Uh, First initial impressions when you saw the overworld and how everything worked. Okay, so um, j- just just touching on it in the fact that we were told that this would be a mainline game. It, I don't think it's a mainline game. It's more of a tie-in to mm. Pokego than it is a mainline game. So, um, in their press conference, have you watched the press conference? I, I, I skimmed through it. Yeah. So, in the press conference, they... The wording they used was mainline Pokemon game, mainline Pokemon RPG. But then they went at the end. They also announced they're working on a uh, another mainline Pokemon game, but they referred to it as a core mainline Pokemon game. Right. Yeah. And they said in the same vein as X Y Sun Moon. So it sounds like this is another offshoot, but it's still a mainline RPG. Whereas next year's Pokemon game is more traditional. Well, I, I know, I know I'm not discouraging from it because, you know, um, again, the world, as you were saying before, and the initial trailer and stuff like that, it's beautiful. Mm, it's a very nice looking game. Yeah, like it's taken the Pokemon series in a very nice looking, <laughs> <laughs> very nice looking direction. direction. Yes, it looks, it looks, it does, it looks fantastic. Um, but again, the reason that they made a statement on what's happening next year with a new game early 2019 mm-hmm. is because not early it's second second half of second 2019. half is yep. it second half yep I don't know uh, it'll, be, it'll be November again you reckon yeah okay well um, just from that perspective they had to make that announcement because this game is not going to be your typical Pokemon competitive game no this, this is them saying we want to broaden our audience and we want to do it in a similar way but um, that's similar to what Pokemon Go did. Well, the insp- the inspiration for uh, these games is very obvious. Yes, from Yellow, very very obvious. You know, uh, riding Pokemon, the partner Pokemon, uh, having Eevee and Pikachu always present at your side. It's it's very obvious that, and and they did actually state it that the whole point of Yellow was to bring in the crowd that was like, hey, look, it's it's. It's Ash and it's Pikachu. Ash and Pikachu. Yeah. yeah, you know, it was it was the same it was the same typical deal. But um, I think I think the thing is is uh, going into this. I think it's more of like a, 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 an eighty dollar nostalgia trip. Mm. That's what I see it as. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not necessarily uh, necessarily saying that's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, I think uh, having having a pseudo sequel to Yellow is is nice. I'm not sure how I feel about some of the mechanics, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But it does look very it it, it brought it brought a lot of lot of childhood cheer out in me. Hmm. I, yeah. I I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. So when I first saw the Overworld, it's like oh my god, the Overworld looks fantastic. 
it looks like what you expect from Pokemon Sun and Moon, but just absolutely gorgeous. No, oh, yeah. Just crisp as... Christmas bacon. Yeah, Christmas bacon. Depends how you like your bacon. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone likes their bacon crisp, surely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it looks uh, really good. Um, the Pokemon following you are so well animated. They are. Yeah. Like, when I saw Electrode, like, actually rolling, I'm like, that that, <laughs> that looks awesome. And you still, you got Pikachu and Eevee, like, on your shoulder. Yep. Like, it looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it does, yeah. Um, And some of the routes and stuff like that that it went through in the trailer look, like, deadly similar. Yeah. Uh, there's that there's that back route between uh, Lavender Town to Fuchsia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I re- and I remember that there's that bird trainer there. That bird trainer's still there. Yeah. So they they had like Cycling Bridge, Mount Moon, uh, Pallet Town. They had like like you could like I want to go back. I haven't actually done this yet, but I want to like freeze it and get all these screenshots out of it. Oh yeah. I'm sure yeah. someone's already done that. You can go and look it up somewhere. I dare say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. There's it it's just so. God, it it is it is really just. It hit me in the face. It hit me a lot harder than I thought it would. I'm like, hey, look, it's it, it's Kanto. I'm like, well, the, every everything seems to be going in the leak's direction at the moment. But uh, seeing seeing this little nostalgia trip just sort of hit me. It it, it adds. It has been a long time since you know uh, I played Red and Blue or Yellow or you know, gold, yeah, silver, crystal. Yeah. Fire, red, leaf, green. Like, yeah, even that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, it mm. was. It it was. And it just... I, I, do, I would imagine it's the same feeling that most people got from looking at it was it was like, bam. Um, the Pokemon Go stuff. Um, I'm not sure how positively that's going to inflict the game. Mm. Um, I'm quite happy with most of it. What What concerns me is what I brought up uh, on a previous episode was the, the catching mechanic. Like, throwing the Pokeball, that looks fine. But, like, the actual scene of catching the Pokemon where the, where the circle's, like, closing in on itself and um, the fact... I don't think you actually battle the Pokemon. You don't battle... No, the, you don't. No. So, no. that's a concern to me. That's... um. Well, they've said they've said actually pretty prominently that you can see them in the world. It's just, like, you can see what you're going to go and catch and then they're, like, there's no... You'll be immediately transported to a capture screen, and you capture them like that, and mm. you go from there. Which mm. makes me wonder how much that they've simplified the rest of the mechanics of the game, whether it be from stats or yeah. And like it, it shows that you do have Pokemon battles. You got uh, you select out of your four moves. They do the animation. They shown that on a Nugget Bridge. Yeah. Uh, but how does that have they simplified battles, or is it similar? Uh, to what what we've been doing for you know twenty five years, <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Like it, it, it might be like they might have just upgraded Pokemon Go's battling, but it's still very basic, very, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I look, I uh, actually going going into the battle mechanics, I, I appreciate the two player mode. Absolutely, yeah. I was going to bring that up. I, th- next, I yeah. think that's awesome. However, it just looks there's I have one major issue with that, and <laughs> yeah. It, yep. It's that it looks like you're literally just two on one belting one tra- trainer ninety percent of the time. Mm. Well, it's like you can. Um, I assume you have if you have an extra person, you have a more chance of uh, catching that Pokemon. And you've yeah. got you got two arms. You use two Joy Cons. <laughs> <laughs> you just like, all right, shake it, get an extra person, and you just throw two Pokeballs at once with both arms. Get like you know an extra <laughs> percentage of catching it. <laughs> yeah. So. He- God, I, I mean, again, it, it's appreciated, but I'm not sure what they were thinking when they were going in that direction. Mm. I, I would appreciate, I would appreciate if like catching was kind of just left to one person. I don't see the point in leaving it to two people. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it'll be good. I think it's a uh, qu- <laughs> quite a smart idea that you know you've got if it's on the TV now and. There, there are like uh, ways other people can join in. It's not just someone sitting there watching you play your RPG. <laughs> I just imagine it's like I just imagine these two Pokeballs like trying to split or split this Pokemon in half. This <laughs> is <just, laughs> yeah, just uh, like I want, I want it. No, I want it. I uh, caught it. No, I caught it. <laughs> uh, it it'd be great for somebody like me who has a child who can pick up something as simple as throwing a ball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which which is good. Don't get me wrong. I think I think that's awesome, but um. I just think that uh, maybe things are dumbed down a little bit 
too much. Mm. Uh, with with the with the single battles on Nugget Bridge, they had a demonstration where there was Pikachu, like in the trailer, where there was Pikachu, Bulbasaur versus a Venonat. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that they that they transition it so that it's double battles. I feel like it should just be that. Mm. Give give people their own choice. Give you a reason to work as a team instead of just smacking on one Pokemon. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not yeah. saying there has to be two trainers. I'm saying like the trainer should send out two Pokemon to compensate for the fact that there's two people playing. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I, I so think... what happened? Um, there was two Pokemon out versus one Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. I, I don't... Again, I don't understand. I don't understand why it has to be like that. And like, if you want to be couch cooperative, you could just be like, hey... <laughs> we'll, we'll make it so it's double battle and yeah. the trainer sends out two Pokemon instead of one and then from there it's like oh well what are you going to do I'm going to attack the Venonat while you attack this one or put this one to sleep or something yeah. like that who You'd knows be strategic who knows they might change that but I hope so I could imagine someone just being like you know this is hard I'm just going to fucking shake this Joy-Con <laughs> and I'm going to just go to town <laughs> yeah. with two of my Pokemon instead of one well yeah that's 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 the thing I I would imagine it's more like an assist mode, but it's way too assisty. Mm. Like having two Pokemon out at once, that's pretty strong. Well, certainly, all like you're pretty much Team Rocket at that stage. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it it would just be nice. I feel if they just had it so it shifted in that direction. Mm. Catching mechanics aside, you know, there's also the problem with that. But I. I don't know. Most of most of Pokemon and trying to catch Pokemon in Pokemon games is anyway is whittling it down, throwing a Pokeball, trying to get it in. It just adds another layer. Yeah, it's a tedious layer that's been a problem with Pokemon for years in catching legendaries and stuff like that. And mm. it offers a challenge trying to keep your team alive. Sometimes, I yeah. guess in the past. So, yeah, I, I'm keen to. I'm going to keep my mind open. I'm not going to make a judgment until I play it because. Um, I feel like a lot of uh, directions Pokemon sort of gone in in some years. Like I remember when uh, Black and White were first announced, and just seeing the, the graphics, and especially in the screenshots on your computer, that game looked very blurry and very underwhelming. It's yeah. Like the first, but playing that game on your DS, it looked fo- it looked really nice. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah. Um, and the battle scenes, which looked blurry on the PC, it looked really nice animated on your uh, DS. So, you know, just little things like that. So I think. Um, who knows? We might be like, oh. You know. Look, I'd be happy going around from the start of the game, going through eight gyms, getting to the Elite Four, beating the Elite Four, doing that. that that The Pokemon adventure. You know? That's fine. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. And if there's little things in between that it's like, hey, you're going to throw a Pokeball and that's all you're going to do when it comes to catching one Pokemon, then that, that, that shit's going to happen. Yeah. You know, fine. As long as, as they've made it very clear that we're getting an actual core... Pokemon game next yeah because year. I feel like next year is going to be the hard like, quote unquote hardcore Pokemon game yeah well and and they yeah. I feel like they're like we better tell them this, we better tell them because otherwise it's going to confuse yeah. the shit out of them yeah because years for years and years they've been developing <clears throat> like Pokemon games like simultaneously even bringing one out every year yeah yeah and the reason they're telling us this year is just to those of us who are like who are worried about the throwing the pokeball and you know stuff like that i think yeah that's why they told us the other thing is they didn't actually give away too much info story wise no like we don't we don't know about uh we we uh had a talk about when we had a talk about pokemon obviously the pokemon leaks uh we're like uh you know blue might be the professor or something and red might be the lance esque or steven esque person in the game mm-hmm. didn't see any of that we saw professor oak in the trailer yeah and um, we, we saw a team rocket grunt yeah um we saw the two mm-hmm. characters in the overworld looking running through something that looked like team rocket's base with the knitter king and knitter queen yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know what you're referring to yeah so I'm, actually I'm... no that might be the underground pass that could be too yeah that goes under saffron mm. that's possible anyway yeah, she probably is actually. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. What was I talking about? <laughs> I forgot now. <laughs> You're just lost in it, I and mean, I think I am too. Yeah. Like it's a lot of it's a lot of information to take in. in yeah, one because hit. like, <laughs> I'll, in the group chat, um, you guys were just like, "Oh, 
finally it's here and he just posted a link to the trailer and I'm just watching it on my phone just like taking it all in I'm like and they, they just started off with the mobile phone I'm like oh, okay okay <laughs> alright we'll see where this is going we'll see where this is going yeah but I think I think it will be a fun a fun game I think uh, we'll all be happy with it um, and if we're not hopefully next year <laughs> is yeah. the big leap we want for the Pokemon series before we before we leap off this topic um, and move on to the future and beyond because there's going to be a bit of a shorter podcast because this is the thing we specifically wanted to talk about today, quite clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, the Pokemon Go stuff. Do you? How do you feel about it? You can you can catch Pokemon in Pokemon Go, bring them over to your game. We don't yeah. know how much we don't know how much of a instance that is. You drop them in something called the Go Park, but you don't know whether you're going to be able to take them on your adventure or something like that. There's no way to transfer the Pokemon from Pokemon Let's Go Eevee or Let's Go Pikachu to Pokemon Go, which means that it's a one-way transition, much like... Could you not? I po- thought I saw... That no, you, could- you cannot. You can't? Okay. You yep. cannot. You can only transfer... You can transfer gifts from mm-hmm. um, the Switch game to Go. You cannot transfer Pokemon back and forth. Okay. So, if you catch something in Go and send it over to the Go Park, I don't think it's possible to send it back. Okay. Yep. That's the way they made it sound anyway. But they said there was a little teaser at the end of the trailer. It was like, oh, so you'll meet a special Pokemon or something, and they were sending that to Go. Not sure what the deal is there. Maybe it's it's like, oh, you get your personalized Eevee or Pikachu in Go or something. Hmm. Which is something I could feel would happen. That could be cool, and that's really cool how you can um, dress it up. I love that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that that um, I'm sort of thinking. Oh, so this so, so this, this isn't your Pikachu in yellow, for instance, where you can trade it and you can put it in the PC and you can, you know, just treat it as a normal Pokemon. Is is this Pikachu and or Eevee going to be able to evolve? Yeah, I'm curious about that subject too. Can you Be- customize your Vaporeon and have it on your shoulder? Like, well, because it completely the the thing is, is when we were talking about it initially, it completely redundantized the fact that it's like Eevee can evolve into many different things. Mm-hmm. So, but Pik- Pikachu, I can see just keeping it as a Pikachu. Pikachu is fine. It's got yeah, it's got electric attacks. Um, you know, you can teach it multiple TMs now in the later games. But Eevee, as a normal type, he doesn't have many moves he anyway. didn't have jack you can you can teach him what, what tackle return frustration i would still like, pick eevee anyway sorry not sorry yeah i like the idea of dressing up a tiny little eevee instead of a instead of a pikachu uh but yeah i don't know it's it's really confusing because the problem with evolving your pikachu in pokemon yellow was that if you transferred your if you traded your Pikachu over to a copy of Red, Blue, or yeah, another yeah. Yellow and <laughs> traded it back, it still worked. Your Pikachu still worked as normal. But if you evolved it in the other game, transferred it back, you lost Pikachu forever. It just turns into a normal Arthur Archie. Yep, and it was just gone. <laughs> not sure. Not don't don't ask me how the programming on that shit works, but that's how it worked. Mm. You know, it makes me want to go back and play Yellow again, though. God damn. Um, 3ds Virtual Console. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My 3DS is still sitting here. <laughs> oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I actually did get it on Virtual Console. I might have to take my my 3DS home and play it now. God, it it, it it's just brought the childhood out in me. I um yeah, I played a fair bit of Yellow when it came out on Virtual Console. I didn't finish it though. I got up to like, I love Yellow. <laughs> yeah, Yellow's really cool. Yeah, I actually didn't play Yellow. I played um. Like red or blue, I forgot which one. Then obviously fire red leaf. Green. Crystal's out on the virtual console now too, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm yeah, taking well. my 3ds home and I'm buying those. <laughs> Don't forget it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like in such a Pokemon mood. I am in such a Pokemon mood, but well, I'm in a, in a Pokemon mood to play an old Pokemon game. Yeah. Not... I am so happy that like we were we were hoping that these leaks were real. We were hoping it would get announced before E3, but the news we got was like we got a little a fun little dumb mobile game to. Just muck around mu- with yeah. on Switch. Yeah. That's fine. Cool. Mm-hmm. Chuck a bit of money into that if you're really enjoying it. I think I might, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. New Pokemon games, November 16th. Awesome. Cannot wait for those. Yeah, bang. Yeah. Those and Smash Bros. Um, Mario Tennis and I assume whatever else is going to be announced at E3 has me so happy to be a Switch owner. Absolutely. And, you know, more Pokemon games next year as well. If 
if that wasn't enough for you and you know they're going to be traditional games so I dare say uh, us two and uh, uh, the audience who listens to us who are into Pokemon games mm-hmm. are going to be ecstatic for that too yeah I just I just think it, it, this is such good news to come out like we were hoping for it we were praying for it we're just like hopefully something nice comes out but to hear that there's not one Pokemon game coming out but a second one coming out the following year that's going to cater to both audiences that want and you know what the story in the the, the story in Let's Go is going to be so much better than that of a current mainline Pokemon game I feel I hope so there, there, looks, <laughs> there so. looks like there's a lot of heart in it it doesn't look like to a degree the character like y- your main character and shit is soulless you think <laughs> you know why all those memes it's just like blank face <laughs> yeah you know why though why back to basics for a start like the Kanto region story, like there's no Mewtwo is not going to go around destroying the place, for example. <coughs> no, um, yeah. So it's back to basics. Is about I assume it's going to be about the trainer starting off with either Pikachu or Eevee and going off from there. You know, just beating beating gyms, catching Pokemon. That's going to be the main premise of this game. Um, mm-hmm. Even if they do put some wacky storyline stuff in there, I don't think they'll go too far. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. Uh. Well. So, so to wrap up, you're not too fussed about the Pokemon Go thing. Uh, no, I'm I'm just keeping open minded about it. I'm not gonna. It's it's a three minute trailer. I'm not gonna be like, oh yuck, Pokemon Go, because you know I like Pokemon Go. I still play Pokemon Go. Uh, yeah, I open it from time to time, but I just I the only problem I have with it, I guess, with the Pokemon Go integration is that it just seems I find I find relying on two pallets of software to play play one to its absolute best compatibility is a pain in the butt yeah yeah and that's the same with anything like you could you could say that about anything that it, that goes with uh, you know MMOs and their companion apps like <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy had one released uh, one had is having one released where like you can pay a premium and you get extra shit and you oh no <laughs> and really yeah, it, it's not it's not game breaking, but it's it's more more money. Just yeah, I would I would explain, but it would require me to go on a spiel, so I'm not gonna. But no, it, I don't exactly. <laughs> so like, it, it's just adding another complication to something that doesn't need to be complicated. Mm. I I think I think the whole catching Pokemon and being able to see them on your TV when you get home that's that's nice and cool and everything. But how are those Pokemon going to be used in the game? Yeah, it'd be interesting how you transfer CP to level and, like, stuff like that. Yeah. 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 I, I would imagine they're going to have to integrate new systems to accommodate for that. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm I'm skeptical. I'm still a little bit skeptical. With the thing we didn't touch on before we leave the subject is the Pokeball controller. Oh, uh, yes. Um, this is a cool idea to a degree. However, it's almost completely useless outside of anything else. Uh, I just got a question for you because I missed this. How do you control the game with the ball? So there's a button on the top, yeah, there's and a... there's a control stick, which is the the button on the ball. All right, so it's a joystick. It is a joystick, I believe. And you yeah. press it in for like accept. I think it's it's something really, like that. Yeah, okay. It's it's yeah it's it's really it's 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 a little bit all over the place. Yeah, so like it's a pretty big gimmick, but as a kid, I would freaking love that. Oh yeah, as kids, <laughs> and, and the ball at the TV. Like. <laughs> I made I made I made a point about this. We have we had a little discussion with some people on Facebook. Mm. See, I don't, I wouldn't mind bringing that around with me, but at the same time, I don't want to bring a Pokeball with me. I'd like it if it was like a, uh, you know, remember the thing from Heart Gold Soul Silver, the Poker Walker, the Poker Walker. If, yeah. if it was like flat and I could put it in my pocket, that'd be a bit better. Yeah, for shove a, an entire Pokeball in your pocket. That's a, bit, <laughs> for, a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> It's the same because they had these Pokeball key rings at EB Games, which are just actual Pokeballs. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't fit that in my pocket with my keys. <laughs> no, no. That's but anyway, big. yeah. So go on. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> just interrupt you. Good way to go. Um, I I think I think they're riding off the gimmick of uh the uh Pokemon Go Plus, mm. and uh, good on them. <laughs> well. <laughs> When I had a discussion with you about this, you were like, "Oh, you know, it was a decent piece of tech. It did a it did a job." And I'm like, "Yeah, but fifty dollars for a piece of plastic, where if you press a button, it plays the game for you." Mm. See, I I wouldn't have been interested in that in for any other context uh, context except for going for a run. We got the phone in your pocket, you're going for a run. You say, "Babe, oh, press 
Like, and keep running, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and keep, keep running. running. Like, you're not going to... I think that's the only use for it. If you're going for a walk and you're like, I'm going to put my Pokemon Go Plus, I don't have to use my phone, where you could easily access your phone, you know, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think it's coming to the vein of, like, here's a... Here's a Here's a here's a kind of pointless accessory for literally anything else. Yeah. It's like what do you it's you, like put you can it, you can use this pokeball as a pokeball a, a pokeball go what's it called? A, I forgot what it's called. You can use this pokeball accessory as Pokemon a Pokemon Go Plus. A Pokemon Go Plus. Yeah, but that is does it the, the pocket space. Yeah, a more inconvenient Pokemon. Yeah. It is inconvenient as hell. Yeah. I I appreciate the sentiment of like hey, you want to touch our little nostalgia bones and tickle them like <laughs> yeah, no but I, it, it's impractical it's not very smart in in some degrees i think there'll be more features to it than a go plus than the go plus mm. and that's that's kind of cool i hope it's bouncy but going by the veins of controllers that we've had for the switch they're 100 to 120 dollars oh good point what yeah. the hell is this gonna cost a couple, it- couple of bucks it it had the price in yen. I I hadn't converted it. Was it um it was four four thousand seven hundred yen? Four thousand seven hundred yen. I'm going to convert that real quickly. All right. But so, while we keep talking yeah. about it, so while while you convert that, Bryce, we'll end the show with well, some no no with some questions from Dylan Br- Bl- <laughs> Dylan Blight from the Explosion Network. Hang on. <laughs> what? We going to talk about Pokemon in the future first. Hold your horses. Oh, of course. All right, we'll, well, we'll do these questions, then we'll talk about Pokemon in the future. All right, all right. So, he asks a question. He says, uh, Team Eevee or Team Pikachu? Uh, team Eevee. I'm Team Pikachu. No, Team Eevee. I love Pikachu. I, I have seen enough Pikachu in my lifetime. I've played Pokemon Yellow. It's time for Team Eevee. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Eevee needs, needs his spotlight. I love Eevee. Eevee's so cute. He's he is cute. cute. Uh, when did you re-download Pokemon Go? When did I re-download it? Dylan, you were you were coming out with the questions. Um, yeah, he's got a few questions. <laughs> I, I had it for about three months. I had it for about three months, uh, and then I got rid of it for 12. <laughs> Unfortunately, the game just dropped off the face of the earth, and that's why I'm kind of a bit worried, because when Pokemon Go makes changes, they're so drastic. Mm. And it, it's I know, I know it's in a decent place now, but... Them, I, I was so more motivated to play the game when it was in its base form and it was simplified and they didn't overcomplicate it and ruin it in so many weird ways. But it, it's installed on my phone now. I have a phone that's actually got the size to warrant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A bigger screen. Yeah, because yeah, when, when it first came out, I was playing on an iPhone 5 and it was yeah, a bit small. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's it. It does make it really easy to throw Pokeball those, Pokeballs though because you didn't have to stretch your thumb. Um, I never actually... Uh, re-downloaded oh, it. Shit. <laughs> how, how much is it? 57 Australian dollars. That's not too bad. I don't Be- care. Because the the, uh, the the other plus was um 50 here. It was, yes. But 57 Australian dollars, but that's only converted. That's yeah. not including the tax. So we're going to be looking at about 70. 70, 70 bucks. For, for a Pokeball with... Three buttons. Yeah, well, don't expose your kids to Pokemon. That's the <laughs> that's the moral of the story. Seventy dollars. <laughs> so I never actually re-downloaded oh. it because I I never deleted it. But I started playing it again. Oh, I don't really play it often, but every now and again, if I'm going for a walk, my, I've got my phone there and I've got enough battery <laughs> to warrant it. Um, I I just turn it on, and hatch some eggs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just I, I don't make a big effort to go and play it, but. I don't know if uh, we're trying to get shiny. If we're shiny hunting now, and you can put your shinies from <laughs> the, the Go games to the real games, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll try. Maybe, maybe I'll try. Uh, how many TVs will break with remotes or Pokeballs <laughs> oh, thrown s- through them? Oh, I, I, it's so many. You're gonna see so many posts where like 70 inch <laughs> ultra thin screens have had Pokeballs thrown through them. Like on, the kids on... think you actually like hit hit them on the TV with the ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's totally gonna happen. Yeah. And last one, can I get a nest ball, great ball, or some variation on the plain ball? <laughs> oh, I, I would like to say that. Uh, I reckon they'll have skins for them. A premier ball that'll be cool. They'll... I love premier balls. You you wait. They'll jump on that. They'll jump on that shit like wildfire. You get like, like if you buy an ultra ball, you actually have better chances of catching the Pokemon. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> No, I'm not going to go that far. I'm going to say, like, uh, they there will be a company like Nike or something that just jumps on it and just wants just to... stickers and produce shit. ...produce skin, like, yeah. skins for that thing. I... It looks... It's $70. It, look, it looks fun. <laughs> it does look fun to squeeze. But he, he ends by saying, you didn't want any questions? Too bad, hey. Because I never actually said any questions. But, of course, um, anyone is more than welcome to send in questions to any episode of The House of Mario. We are all open to... Look, if you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if if you drop something in the Discord and you're like, ah, oh, hey, I, I'm curious as to what you think about this, yeah, or yeah. if you if you go on Twitter, you're like, I'm curious as to what you think about this. Now this this little man Dylan here, he's he's little done a man. good thing. This little man Dylan, he's gonna he's done a good thing here. Your friend of the show, l- lovely bloke. Thank you for dropping us some questions that we can react to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Thanks, man. We'll give him a shout out. Uh, go over to explosionnetwork.com to go and check out all their content. They've got heaps of podcasts, including an, uh, a PlayStation themed podcast, which is fantastic. I listen to that every week. So yeah, good on them. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bryce. So the future of the Pokemon series next year, 2019, uh, more traditional core Pokemon games. I assume this will be Gen 8. Maybe I think it would be Gen Eight. I think this is their lead up to uh, a new region. I think, Probably. I think they mentioned. I didn't see it in the press conference, but <laughs> someone might have said it in the Discord. I think they uh, might have said somewhere that it's a new place, new you know, new stuff. <laughs> You're not retreading. You just hear Dawn and Ethan, the pro tags from Diamond and Pearl, somewhere in the background, just snapping their keyboards. Yeah. Well, why do people think we're getting? Uh, <laughs> Diamond Pearl. Diamond Pearl before, um, you know the well because technically Diamond Pearl should have come in place where Let's Go is. Let's be real. I'm not, I'm not saying mm. that it should, but no, that w- it was their time slot. Do you know what I'm saying? I think I think we need a bit more time for Diamond Pearl remakes. Like personally, I'm not I'm not in the mood for a Diamond Pearl remake no, just yet. I I agree because the thing is is that yes, it was while it was while it was the DS, not the 3DS. Mm-hmm. It was still the dual screen system thing. I would, I would love to see Gen Five remakes because I love that region. I love the Pokemon in that region. I love mm-hmm. everything about that region. But I know in my heart, it's not ready. It's not time. It's not ready. No, I know it. I know it. So I'm not. I'm not going to push it. Um, and a lot of people probably know by now. Diamond and Pearl is not my favorite region, so I'm not particularly. I'm not particularly fussed about going back to them either. I mean, I'm not hanging out for them like I was hanging out for Johto and Hoenn, but I'll be happy to go back to Sinu. I like, I like that place. Yeah. So, uh, is it going to be snowing all the time like it was in Platinum? Is it going to be not like yeah. it was in the other ones? Who knows? No, the the, uh, the uh, storyline of that, the storyline of the uh, re- well, the uh, remakes are going to be um, Heatrance has taken over the main continent oh, and turned everything to lava. Oh, 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 that sounds dangerous. And then, then people are just yelling out from the rooftops like, hey, aren't you just Groudon but steel type? And be like, yes. Yes. I'm Groudon, but less important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm another legendary... I'm like, back, like, I'm another legendary from this era which has no relevance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another legendary that appeared in the Pokemon animated series while some trainer was trying to sign up to a tournament. Oh yeah, <laughs> remember that? It was just a Heatron standing in a lobby. You're like, huh? Huh? Hi, Heatron. I thought you were legendary. He's like, not really. Not really. <laughs> not a lot re- of people have me. You think about how many copies of Pokemon in in reality is any of us legendary? There's like 21 million copies of Diamond out there, so uh, <laughs> this be it. <laughs> not even Dialga's special at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you think it would be a New generation? I it'll it'll probably be a new generation, but I'm not sure. Mm. I uh, look, I I would uh like I I think the main thing they've got to focus on is something that we've been preaching like ham and cheese toasties after a bad mm. bad drinking. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I I couldn't think of an analogy apart from that. Um, pizza, pizza's better than toast. Fine probably. pizza, but I like ham and cheese toasties. Oh no, I'm a yeah. Go on, yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> I um. I think that uh, the Pokemon series needs to really look at itself and go, "Hey, what do our what do our fans want?" Because this, uh, let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee, uh, a kind of a little bit riding off the fact that Pokemon goes also in its palms and 
they're going to use Pokemon Go as an excuse for you to... It's like, hey, you're going out, you, you, you can't play your Let's Go? Well, go catch some Pokemon and go to bring back to your game. So oh, technically, you're still kind of playing it. They're trying to bring in the Pokemon uh, Go community like who haven't played the RPGs into the RPG. Then next year, they want to catch them with the proper Actually, something RPG. I completely forgot to mention. What's that? I, I had I had shown this to my partner. She just, she just woke up getting ready for Night Shift or whatever. And I'd shown this to my partner. I'm like, here's a trailer. I'm like, tell me what you think. Because she used to play Pokemon Go as well. She's not a big core Pokemon RPG fan like the rest of us. Or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, I was just like, watch it and tell me what you think. And she's just like, you know what? If they had released this a couple months after Go come out, it would have made a freaking killing. Yeah, no shit. It would have it would have destroyed the market. Could you imagine? Could you imagine like the 3DS or the Switch, or whatever platform it was at the time? Like, All the sales. Yeah. It would have been mental. It would have been crazy. Just think of that. Because we, we have friends. like Pokemon Go. Just going back to Pokemon Go. I know we're just like... <laughs> this end of the podcast. We're just it's going, exciting. We're it's just exciting. Go, yeah, we're just going right off topic. But Pokemon Go. I remember it was like... We didn't know when it was going in beta. And then it went in beta and like a few people had access to it. And us Pokemon fans were just like... Oh, cool. Pokemon Go. Then one day they said... Oh, Pokemon Go is available now. Um... It, it's out of beta. It's on the Apple Store. You still got to wait a little bit for the uh, the, the the Android Store, but uh, it'll be up there eventually. Oh, cool! Go and download it. See a couple of friends on Facebook. Oh, cool! I caught a Squirtle. Oh, that's cool. Like it's just like such a little. It was like a little bonus thing for us. But all of a sudden, every single person it just blew up. Between I don't know ten and thirty were playing it. Every, everyone with a mobile phone. It was it was it was honestly surreal. It was yeah. Like as a as a Pokemon fan, my whole life, and people who have fallen out of it or just <laughs> have, who have never been into it, this seeing them absolutely loving this game was absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as bare bones a game as it was, uh, yeah, that was really special. <laughs> that was... Yeah, yeah, it absolutely, and and it caused people to go out and buy 3ds's even to go and play Sun and Moon. Mm. It did. It yeah. did. Definitely. Could, yeah, because Sun and Moon wasn't out quite yet, was it? No, was, it wasn't. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. It, it it caused people to go out and buy it. Um, in in the in the future, like I, I'm not sure I want any more Go integration. It might be fun for a bit of a change. Mm. Uh, going into 2019, I'm I'm hoping that I get my Pokemon game with no Go integration. Yeah, so that that's the thing. Say people say this brings in a new audience, and also also these features they might be fantastic. We might be go all right these. We might want them to be main sta- main uh, features in every Pokemon game from now on. We mm-hmm. might really enjoy the uh, the catching mechanics, and if these games are like, all right, it's back to what you know. It's back to weakening your Pokemon, pressing the button, the ball flies and hits them in the head. And <laughs> what will be people's reaction to that? That's what I wonder. Uh, it'll be a bit of a it, look. I I understand like the appeal and stuff like that, but. They do have a competitive community now that they have to cater for, and they can't, they can't really shirk the responsibilities of that. Uh, they hold tournaments for, they hold tournaments for Pokemon, whether it's whether it's the games or the trading. Yeah, card one's game. just finished. This year's is just finished. It's literally just yeah. yeah. And then you've got people that on on Twitch that rely on streaming these games and stuff like that, and they have specific activities that they rely on, like shiny hunting. For example, yeah, I'll, like shiny hunting's fun. Like as frustrating as it is, when you it's fun in the midst of it. When you catch that, when you find that shiny Pokemon, it is oh yeah, such an adrenaline rush. Like, it absolutely awesome. is. Yeah. So I think like it's important to I especially going forward. Like if you're gonna have if you're gonna have a Pokemon game that's really crazy, like in terms of like how you're changing it, like they are with uh, Let's Go. Um, they have to have the contrast next year where it's just like, it's the same Pokemon game you know. That doesn't mean I'm I'm saying like, hey, make Sun and Moon again because God knows we need more content than that and we need more of, more of a fleshed out thing than what Sun and Moon was. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but we need to see a Pokemon game that we know and love and competitive players can use to play their competitive game, breed Pokemon, shiny hunt, you know, anything like that that that's something that needs to be staled in mm. um actually something i just thought about 
are you not able to battle wild Pokemon to gain experience now? There's a lot of questions like just little small things like that. It's really, yeah, it, it's really. Or you I, have, I don't or you just know. have, you have to catch them to level up. Your... Do they level at all? Yeah, well, good point. We have to go back and look at the trailer see if there's like level, you know, two or level whatever. Yeah, in there. Yeah, like it's, it's, uh, it just seems, it does seem like a massive and drastic change. I'm not sure. Um. It could be just... It could literally just be a story-based thing where it's just like... You, your Pokemon just go with you and go with the difficulty. And mm. you have to know your type advantages. And if you don't know your type advantages, you're going to get your ass walloped. <laughs> that might just be the game. Yeah. We don't know. Um, and I mean, uh, if that's... if that Again, if that's the case, I, I'm fine with that. Mm. Uh, for one game, and then going back to... <laughs> you know back back to back to the normal i think i think it's important to keep that commi- that especially that competitive community very much alive it's important to keep the people that are sp- streaming the content for your game to twitch the shiny hunters and there, there are levels sorry i'm just there are right levels yep okay good yep. so you, look at this man with his ipad checking his things there is levels can i have a look there are so there's there's a uh, what what would be in a normal Pokemon game there? There's a level bar, there's gender, there's a uh, move select. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> he's paused it on the exact thing I was talking about earlier. This Venonat's going to get railed on. He's level 9 versus a level 18 Bulbasaur and a level 17 <laughs> Pikachu. Like, come on, at least let him double battle. Well, he's just going to get railed on. Yeah. See, I didn't Poor Venonat. Poor Venonat. He's just going to... Mm. So basically what my opinion on these games are, just to close up, is that I think they're going to be good from what I can see it's going to be great um, but I think Game Freak have uh, given us a little out card in case we, you know we play them and we're like you know what this is way too much throwing Pokeballs and doing a lot of bullshit oh, I don't like <laughs> uh, we have the out to at least go well we've got a true quote unquote Pokemon games next year so we just sit down and wait again <laughs> yeah 100% yeah um I I have to agree on that point. That card, that that title, that that card there that said 2019 for a new core Pokemon game, that that was put there for a very big reason. Mm-hmm. And whether that's uh, because of the backlash that they've received in regards to Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun and Moon or anything that they've been doing recently is to question. Yeah. Um. We uh, a lot of people had high hopes for let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee, uh, before we even knew that's what they were and the leaks come out and all that. They had really high hopes for them for it to be a core Pokemon experience where the competitive battle- battling would move to the Switch mm-hmm. and we would be seeing it from that perspective. That's obviously not the case now. It's not going to be a competitive Pokemon game. It's going to be a very, very story-based one. As far as I'm concerned, there's no online interactivity at all. I don't know about trading. I I haven't. I would have to say trading's in there somewhere. I haven't read. Oh, they'll have to be trading. That's a major component of Pokemon games. So I think we're going to find out a lot more about it at E3. Um, Maybe. Yeah. They're going to have like a section in Nintendo Treehouse or something. I dare say. Yeah. I suppose we just uh, sit and wait then. Sit and wait. Yep. November sixteenth. November sixteenth. Cannot wait. Yeah. It's it's going to be a ride. If we're not too busy playing Smash Bros already. No. Uh, well, let's just hope Smash doesn't come out November thirteenth because then Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon's buggered for me. <laughs> oh, it's not buggered for me, but I have to buy an extra Switch so I can play. I can play Pokemon one handed, and maybe I can not like, work. No, you have to, to buy play. a third Switch because you have to play Pokemon Quest. You have to play. <laughs> Um, well, Pokemon, <laughs> yeah, Pokemon, Pokemon Quest at least plays itself. Yeah. No, actually, it'll be on mobile phone by then. Oh, God damn Yeah, it. yeah, so... I didn't think of that. So I have to buy a second iPhone so I can make phone calls <laughs> while <laughs> Pokemon <laughs> Quest is going. <laughs> uh, God damn it. You can tell we're happy. It looks good. Yeah, awesome. Uh, well, um, the leaks beat us. So one for the leaks. <laughs> um, Congratulations, leaks. Yeah, <laughs> clap, clap for the leaks. Clap for the Hang leaks. on, golf clap. Well done, leaks. Well done, leaks. You Congrats- did it. You, you managed to get into Neon Tick's pants and get some info out. We of didn't there. notice like two months after you actually leaked, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just seems like all the info was already there by that point. I, I don't know. Uh, I suppose we'll see what happens with the rest of the leaks and E3 coming up. Um, but this was the only one that was almost completely spot on. Yeah. Almost. 
<laughs> little inconsistent. Pokemon Quest didn't link though. Didn't no, get... it didn't. Like that's what I mean. That's why I think Neantech yeah. they're the reason. That's, that's a good point. No, but also the p- person is like, eh, no one cares about that. <laughs> Just takes a picture of the other thing. <laughs> uh, you know. All right, Bryce. Where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, Bryce oh. Dewitt. Oh, and you can find me at idruby and the podcast on Twitter at the House of Mario. We are a part of the Eight Bit Collective. Uh, uh, I always stumble on this bit. <laughs> <laughs> the Eight Bit Collective, a collection of ten podcasts and their po- and their podcast hosts. Yes. Running together as a group. Yeah, there's 22 of us who are all making podcasts, all having fun, talking into microphones, and maybe uh, toilet roll dispensers. I don't know. Toilet roll dispensers. Maybe some people. Perfect. <laughs> maybe some other people are more creative. I don't know. <laughs> um, and one last thing I need to mention, mm-hmm. and I think I think you would be on the same point in agreement as me as yes, well. Yes, I will be. Thank you. Thank you very much for the birthday wishes. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. You know, I, I can't tell you how how happy it made me when I was pulling up to work. I'm like, oh, no, I've got a three-hour shift ahead of me. Better check Twitter before I go in. And I get all these nice little messages. Thank you so much, guys. You've been absolutely wonderful. And we will take a bow. Yeah. When I read... um, I bowed. I promise. <laughs> you bowed. <laughs> <laughs> when I read um, what Metadox re- re- wrote on Twitter... I actually like teared up a bit. I'm like, oh my god, thank you so much. Like, that meant a lot to me. I'm sure it did to you too. Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah. yeah. That was that was the first message. That was the first notification that we got, and uh, Meta was right on it. Thank you, Meta. You were yeah. you were right on top of it. Um, but that's not to discredit anybody else. No, no. Because you all left wonderful messages, and yeah. it was very heartwarming. And it only makes us want to go further and further. Absolutely. So here, here's here's the birthdays and here's the Pokemon. Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, bro. Since we're going back to Kanto, uh, Nintendo Jukebox this week is a Team Rocket Battle Remix Version Two by Glitch City herself. Glitch City. Um, Glitch City uh, was uh, the first artist we featured on the House of Mario back on episode one. It was yeah. Yep. Um, actually, version one of the Team Rocket theme song was the intro. It was. It to was. our episode one, which we left for like thirty seconds, and yep. people are like, "Why the hell is your intro so long?" And I'm sort of like, "Well, the song sounds really good, so I don't want to cut it off early." But yeah. I get your point, and that's why we sort of changed things up. But yep. Yep. Thank yep. you very much, guys, and we'll see you next week for our E3 predictions episode. Be sure to get your predictions in. Yes, please get your predictions in. We've already got a few in. in and I haven't read them yet because I'm going to save them for when I actually read them on the show. Yep, we're going to ha- we're going to have a big round up so if you've got your predictions in, I don't care if you leave them on Twitter. You can you can leave a prediction that says Reggie will ride in on a unicorn. No, please do. That'd be hilarious gun. to read. Please just if, <laughs> if, if someone just wants to go uh I'm just going to meme my whole list. Just meme your whole list. We won't we don't care. That's fun. That's that's content. <laughs> <laughs> Give us your content. Content. No, we want to read them. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Catch you later. See you later.